All right, um, so we should take a look at part C as well. Um, however, that's something that we didn't really get a chance to talk about last time for magnetism. So let me tell you uh, what, what the key ideas are there. Um, if we have a particle that's moving to the right mm -hmm. and accelerating to the right, um, what direction is uh, what direction is the force in? What's the direction of the net force on this particle? Um, it's to the right. Is that because of the velocity or the acceleration? The acceleration. Yeah. Remember that force equals m a. Mm -hmm. The acceleration and force are in the same direction. So I could use the same vector to indicate the direction of the force. They wouldn't have the same magnitude, but they'd have the same direction. Now, does this mean that this object is speeding up, slowing down, or changing direction? Just kind of based on our common sense. Here, the acceleration is parallel to the velocity. Do you think this means we're speeding up, slowing down, or changing direction? Yeah, I think it's kind of intuitive that when the acceleration is parallel to the velocity or when the force is parallel to the velocity, you're speeding up. So would this be speeding up, slowing down, or changing direction? Um, it would be slowing down. Because the acceleration is anti-parallel to the velocity. Notice that it doesn't matter whether the acceleration is in the positive direction or the negative direction. What matters is that it's anti-parallel to the velocity. Well, then what does it mean when the acceleration is perpendicular to the velocity? Well, that must mean that you're changing direction, but not changing speed. Why is that? Well, kind of by process of elimination. We've seen that the component of the acceleration that is parallel to the velocity tells you how your speed is changing. But this doesn't have a component that's parallel to the velocity. So it can't be changing your speed. Okay. It has to be changing something, so it's changing your direction. Okay. Okay. Well, we'll just kind of memorize that the component of the acceleration that's parallel or anti-parallel to the velocity changes your speed. I think that's kind of commonsensical. Mm -hmm. And then but, uh, the component that's perpendicular to the velocity has to be the component that's changing your direction. So when you're accelerating, that means you're either changing your speed or changing your direction or both. That's what an acceleration means. What about when the acceleration um, is diagonal with respect to the velocity? Well, this must mean that we have one component of the acceleration that's parallel to the velocity. and one component that's perpendicular to the velocity. So this would be a case where you're both changing your speed and your direction, which is certainly possible. And of course, everything we said for acceleration also holds for force, because they always point in the same direction. If the force is perpendicular to the velocity, it's changing your direction, but not changing your speed. And if the force is anti-parallel to the velocity, it's slowing you down, but not changing your direction. Okay. So these are some important ideas about acceleration, force, and velocity that unfortunately students oftentimes um, aren't clear about. So um, in this case, you would only be changing your direction, not be changing your speed, when the force and the velocity are perpendicular to each other. So let's say we have a proton that is moving up, and here's the magnetic field. Let's figure out the direction of the force on that proton. What would be the direction of the force on this proton? Let's work that out. Okay. Um, so the proton is positively charged. Right. So Q, well, and the perpendicular is um, perpendicular. 
V is already perpendicular to B, so V perpendicular is the same as V, good. So we know that we should put our thing, fingertips pointing up. So QV perpendicular is also up, so our fingers point up, good. Our palm faces out of the blackboard. Right. And my thumb is pointed to the right, so the force is in the positive X direction. Right, or just... Uh, right. Yeah, to the right. Good. So if the proton was over here, um, the force will be pulling it in this direction. Mm -hmm. Now the key thing to notice here is, remember that our velocity was up. So is this force changing our speed or changing our direction or both? Direction. Yeah, it's only changing our direction. Well now if you think about it, um, the force will always be perpendicular to the velocity in this case, right? The force, because of the right hand rule, the force will always be perpendicular to the velocity. That means it can only be changing your direction. Well, what does your path, um, that means your speed can't be changing. Your speed can't be changing because the force will never have a component that's parallel to the velocity. Well, what does your path look like if you're constantly changing direction but never changing speed? Um, well, that would move you in a circle. If the force is always going to be perpendicular, so when we're over here, the force would be to the right. Uh, I'm really bad at drawing circles. <laughs> but anyway, I'm trying to draw a circle in here. At this point, our velocity is up and the force is to the right. But by the time we get to here, our velocity will be to the right, and if you use the right hand rule, you'll discover that the force would be down at this point. And if you use the right hand rule over here, where the velocity is down, you would discover that the force is back towards the center. When we get back to here, the velocity would look like this. Because the force is always perpendicular to the velocity, you're going to be going through what we called last semester uniform circular motion. Remember uniform circular motion from last term. Uniform means that we're not changing speed. Well, we know we're not changing speed because the force doesn't have a component that's parallel to the velocity. It's only changing our direction. Okay, so what we've discovered here is that when the particle is, when the velocity is perpendicular to the magnetic field, magnetic fields cause uniform circular motion. When your movement is already, or when your movement is perpendicular to the magnetic field, Magnetic fields cause uniform circular motion because the force is always going to rotate to be perpendicular to the movement that you're in. So that tells us about the kind of path that we're going to be in. And then they can ask you uh, questions about this. Um, do you remember from last term, what is your centripetal acceleration when you're moving in a circle? You might remember this formula for finding centripetal acceleration from last term. It's V squared over all, R, your speed over R. So if we were going to say try to use Newton's second law, net force equals ma, well this is what we could plug in for a. We could plug this in for a over here. Um, something else that, they, uh, that we can use here is um, the basic equation distance equals rate times time. Because we're moving with constant speed, we can use a very simple equation for figuring out what distance we've covered. It's just your speed times your time. Maybe I should call this distance equals speed times time. Um, distance equals speed times time. Um, how can we figure out the distance that you're traveling? Well, oftentimes they'll focus on how long it takes to go through one complete rotation. Well, how could you figure out what distance you covered in one complete rotation? This is a circle with radius r. Well, if you know the rate, you know how many... How Let's just think about this in terms of geometry to start with. Yeah, I mean, you know the circumference right. of the circle. Yeah. yeah. All right. I don't know if you happen to remember that formula or not uh, for the circumference of a circle. Mm -hmm. So that would be... Two pi r squared? Actually, well, what should... Oh, what, just two pi r. Right. Yeah. What units should this be in? Um, in meters. Not square meters. Yeah. So that can help us to remember not to square r. 
Okay, so this is something we might need to solve problems about magnetism. If we need to know the distance around the circle, we'd have to use this formula, 2 pi r. And uh, so if we were going through one rotation, we could plug that in for the distance over here. Okay, so um, I wanted to go over this. You don't need all of this for this particular question we're looking at, but I noticed some other problems in the sample exams where you needed these ideas and also in the homework. So these are some formulas that you should have down for magnetism. For magnetism, you might need to use this formula for centripetal acceleration because we'll be moving in a circle. You might need to use distance equals rate times time because we're moving with constant speed. And you might need to know how, what the distance is around one complete circle. That would be 2 pi r. And we've seen that in general, when the velocity is perpendicular to the magnetic field, um, the force will always be perpendicular to your velocity, so you're going to go through a uniform circular motion. 